Hi guys, so first off I need to apologize for the sound of my voice today. I lost my voice a few days ago and the only way for me to do the audio is to try and talk it out in this very deep raspy voice or write it down and display it on the screen. So I have chosen to do it with speaking because I know that sometimes people don't like to read everything. So I'm going to do this but if you do want to just mute me feel free and then you can put the captions on so you can learn a bit more about the Medusa story today. Um, so yeah, that is my apology. It sounds very unusual to me. And yeah, if you can't stand it, please just mute me. I give you full permission. <laughs> okay, so first getting started with what I'm actually working on. Now this, if you've been to the channel before, is a series I'm doing where I create an artwork, usually Art Nouveau themed with a lady as the centerpiece. And I ask the community of subscribers that I have here to help me decide on what word I should use as my prompt word to inspire the artwork. So this month's prompt word was mythology. Um, I put out a poll vote. I thought that might be a nice way to do it. Um, and it came back very, very strongly um, chosen towards mythology, which I actually was really happy with because just learning a little bit about the myths as I was doing my Greece setup in my bullet journal just got me really inspired and I loved learning a little bit more about all the stories that came with the Greek mythology. So it was a great reason to sink my teeth in and find another story that was just really unusual and it certainly did not fail. I found one. Well, actually I was led toward one um, from a couple of comments in the bullet journal series when I talked about Athena. Someone brought up that um, she was actually, she punished Medusa and I will go into that story now because I've had a little bit of a research and it was something I'd never heard of before. And to be honest, I actually really wanted to do Medusa as soon as I started thinking of Greek mythology. I've always really wanted to draw her. So I have taken that on board. That's what I'm drawing today, but I'm also adding elements in to the piece that kind of describe her story and how she became. So let's get started with the story of Medusa. And actually, as I'm speaking, perhaps this raspy voice will just add to the mystery of the tale that I'm about to tell. So from what I learnt in my research, Medusa was one of three Gorgon sisters born from the sea goddess Keto and the sea god Phorsus. But unusually, she was the only mortal of those three sisters. So Stheno and Euryale, they were sea monsters. They were referred to as terrifying creatures. Yet Medusa was said to have been very beautiful and completely mortal. Now Medusa dedicated her life to being the high priestess of Athena's temple and she swore an oath of celibacy. Now there's two differing accounts that I've seen. One that Medusa was seduced by Poseidon, the very violent and ill-tempered god of the sea. Um, or there is another occurrence which is where Poseidon actually violated Medusa without her wanting to. So kind of awful story this one, um, but it is the most prevalent. So now apparently in the background, Poseidon and Athena were always having disputes and Poseidon wanted to rule Athens, but Athena was already in that spot. So Poseidon did this to get back at Athena. When Athena found out, she turned Medusa into a creature that had venomous snakes as hair and the ability to turn anyone to stone when they would look at her. And some accounts say that that's because she was protecting her um, by, you know, never making that damage happen to her again, always just turning a man to stone. Um, and then the other option is that she was angry that she'd been violated in her temple and wanted to punish her. So it's unknown which is the real story and in the end it is a myth so there probably isn't one real story but either way I actually feel kind of sorry for Medusa after this. I never knew anything about her only the look of her that she had snakes as hair and I just never knew that there could be such a story behind this so it was really interesting to learn. Now as Medusa was a mortal she could be killed and she was killed by the Greek hero Perseus. Now he was on a mission sent by another god that I won't go into that mission, but his, his goal was to kill Medusa. And 
the way he would kill Medusa would be quite difficult considering she can turn men to stone as soon as they look at her. Apparently he found Medusa asleep and beheaded her while she was asleep but to get to her he used the shield that he was carrying as a reflection device so he looked at Medusa through the bronze shield and then was able to get to her and behead her without having the risk of being turned to stone. And once he beheaded her, from the neck, from the blood from her neck, sprouted two of her children that she bore to Poseidon. Um, and those children were Chrysor, the golden giant, which I actually had never heard of. But the other one, the other child of Medusa, which I had no idea, is Pegasus, the white winged horse. I could not believe this. I had no idea that these two stories or two mythical creatures were connected. So Medusa is actually Pegasus's mum. <laughs> and once the head of Medusa was brought back by Perseus to Athena, she used it as her, uh, like a tool that she would ward off people by turning them to stone. The head still had the ability to turn people to stone. So she would use that. So you often do see um, on Athena's shield, a head of Medusa, like imprinted on it. So that is why Athena is connected with Medusa and Medusa is always worn as a, um, I think they call it an apotropaic, which is to ward off evil spirits, fight evil with evil. So that is the grand mythology about Medusa. I hope you learnt a little bit like I did. And I honestly just couldn't help realizing how much of this story reminded me of Harry Potter. So I think J.K. Rowling must have really been into Greek mythology. I think a lot of it sounds very familiar. For example, the turning into stone is called petrifying. And if you have seen Harry Potter or read Harry Potter, the snake from Chamber of Secrets actually turned people to stone if you looked at its eyes. So it petrified people in that way, which was just like Medusa. And also Hermione even figures out how to get past the venomous snake by using a reflection in a mirror to get through. So yeah, I just found that so cool and interesting that they are connected. And I think a lot of stories would be coming from these Greek myths because they're just so interesting and, and bizarre. But yeah, I really loved learning about it. I hope you enjoyed this video watching me create this piece. Um, about the piece, I'm really, really happy with it. It's probably my favorite so far. Um, the snakes took so long to draw, um, but they were so much fun, like really convoluted and like trying to figure out where they go and where they would coil was super, super fun. And I also tried to include the Greek meander around the Pegasus badge at the base. The overall shape that I've encompassed her in is my idea of an ornate mirror. So to try and suggest that mirror reflection sort of thing. Um, I've added the owl and the olive branches at the top to represent Athena, her part in the story. And at the base, the two tritons on the side of the Pegasus is to symbolize Poseidon and how he is the father of Pegasus, either willingly or unwillingly on Medusa's behalf. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed listening to the story, even with this voice. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe to the channel for more of these. Also, I am going to be starting on my Indian adventure now, learning more about India, which I'm super excited about. So do come back next week for our India bullet journal setup for the month of August. So thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.